In this video, we'll see the new daylighting dialog in AGI 32, all remodeled to accommodate the Perez all-weather sky. Enable daylighting. We can approach the new dialog in two ways. We can simply enter a known latitude and longitude for our project and proceed from there. Or we can set up a site using the Sites button, where we can keep the details on hand for later use. Let's start by just entering a known location. How about Annapolis, Maryland? 38.98 north by 76.49 west. Default north and west, or the northern hemisphere. You can use a negative sign to enter south or east. Now we can set true north of the site. Nothing really new here, but this is just the counterclockwise angle from computer east setting the orientation vector for true north. Or we can actually use the button. Let's see how that works here. Simply select two points, and we now have true north set at 80.3 degrees. Now we're ready to enter a date and time. The only thing different here now is that the time is now on a 24-hour clock to avoid confusion. We also have a flexible field for when daylight time is applied currently March 10 to November 3rd. Solar position is also calculated once you're in render mode and you open the dialog. So let's move on to sky conditions. This is where the major changes for the Perez sky model are apparent. If you want to use the old IES or CIE generic skies, they're still available to you here. To use the Perez sky model, simply select the Perez all-weather sky. Since we already have a latitude and a longitude selected, AGI 32 lets us easily search the weather database for the closest weather station. Simply click the Find Closest button. Here we have Baltimore, Washington International Airport. That's the closest weather station to Annapolis. If we click the Stations button, we can see other weather stations that are in the area. So the Baltimore, Washington International Airport is 17 miles away. Andrews Air Force Base, 23 miles away, and so on. We can select any of these other weather stations if we prefer to use them over the closest one selected. We're now actually ready to run the simulation. So that's the quick way through the dialog. Let's go back and see what it takes to set up a site to be saved for repeated use on your other AGI 32 projects or files. First let's clear the station, and we'll clear the site. Now click the Sites button. Click the Add button. Let's type in the name of our new site. Let's go down under for Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. I don't know the latitude or longitude, but I can click the little ellipsis or the Find Station button. It does the same thing. And bring up the Weather Station search. type in Brisbane, and it automatically brings up the Brisbane weather station. There are apparently two of them. Select the weather station, and we're all set to go. It's now saved for repeated use, and now we're ready to run the simulation again. Let's look at a couple of items more closely with relation to the TMY weather data. First note that the data in the weather files is typically collected on the hour. If your simulation is set to run at 11.45, for example, AGI 32 will use the correct solar position, but the Perez sky model calibration in terms of diffuse horizontal irradiance and direct normal irradiance will be from the nearest hour. You can see here the time retrieved, noon. Date time retrieval is retrieving the closest time to 11.45. We can set the dialog to interpolate the data, if we like, between the hourly samples. The default is closest. Now let's look at the weather data itself for a moment. The parameters required to calibrate the Perez sky model are diffuse horizontal irradiance, which is sky brightness, and direct normal irradiance, which is sky clearness, and the dew point temperature, which predicts the sky moisture content or relative humidity. As a generalization, you can typically look at the data extracted from the weather file 
for the date and time selected and tell if it is a relatively overcast or clear day. Overcast days have high diffuse horizontal irradiance with typically lower normal direct irradiance. Clear days are the opposite. This particular day looks sort of partly cloudy. The point to be made here is you will want to look at this data if you are planning on basing design decisions on a small sample of dates and times. For example, let's select the weather file for Albuquerque, New Mexico. Go back to Sites, select Albuquerque. This is a typical sunny place with 310 plus days of sunshine per year. Let's go to December 21st. Here we are the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. This is a typical day to compute daylight illuminance. But let's look at the data. The diffuse horizontal irradiance is very low. The direct normal irradiance is zero. This was a dark, dark overcast day in Albuquerque. That's unusual. However, let's wind back a day. Let's go back to the 20th. Now look at the samples. Horizontal irradiance 76, direct normal way up at 862. This was a relatively clear day. Let's go to the 22nd. So we've bracketed December 21st, and now we see again it's a quite clear day. The TMY data is supposed to be selected such that the samples represent a typical condition, which is really not so in this particular case. As always, you need to use your best judgment. And that's it for the new tour of the AGI 32 Daylighting Dialog. Thanks for watching.